We're joined by wine and travel photographer Andrea Johnson as she discusses the challenges of doing a photo shoot during these trying times. Well, this is different scenes in Oregon um, starting this summer. Um, it has been a crazy vintage, obviously, to try to capture things. It's my 17th harvest photographing here. Wow. And um, in preparation, trying to find the right vineyard locations and the app that I was talking about, knowing where the sun's going to come up and having it ready. I was actually doing a drone shoot at this time. Maybe uh-huh. I should- I had the camera on a tripod, and I was able to kind of navigate both simultaneously. Um, often Bob and I will divide and conquer when we have a larger photo shoot and work multiple angles in different spots. But I was on my own this time. And you really want to be able to capture a sense of place, which Mount Hood in the background does only in the summer when the sun is really low. Um, in the winter, if there was more snow and it pops a little bit better. Uh-huh. Um, the only thing that was missing for this scene is not really having people or context into it. And that's what I normally rely on is harvest begins at dawn, which isn't as early as the summer, usually at seven o'clock or so in Oregon and Washington. Um, and there's usually a lot of activity going on with great light. But this year was a tricky one with the California fires bringing a lot of smoke up to Oregon and um, circumstances. And so everything was kind of in flux until last minute picking decisions were made. So you have to just kind of learn to to fly with options. And the next couple are outtakes from a magazine story I was doing with Wine Enthusiast. So the, the Wine Enthusiast story was a series of profiles on new winemakers or new techniques they're working on, but it was all directed to be not portraits per se, but the people in the environment and different um, activities they're doing in preparation. So yeah, the second one was shot like at high noon, which is the exact opposite that I would typically want to be doing landscape options. Yeah. And I had to also figure out how to get around not having the person wear a mask. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, they're there on their own, um, but winemakers will go through the vineyards and do their samples of the grapes. So you can see the Chardonnay in the plastic bag. Oh, I and see that. Okay. Walking through the vineyard to taste for ripeness. And then from there is when they choose the actual pick time. So this is um, a sommelier that's a winemaker that's really well known in Washington. And I'm not gonna be able to show what's in the magazine because it hasn't published yet, but every other shot of him was with a suit and a tie or like in some fancy restaurant environment. I really wanted to capture how involved he is in the vineyard and right. the first approach and a little bit of the sense of place. So like Bob, I was, um, I think I was crouched fairly low, could have held the camera down um, with a bit of a wider angle and just had him walk past me as he was um, doing that process. And you can, I don't like an overly HDR'd photo, but there's a lot of dynamic range and camera raw files now. So it's all right. natural. So I didn't pop anything into his face and just figured out an angle where the, the sunlight wasn't too jarring. Wonderful. I love the diagonal lines again on the, and, and you know, in the behind him. The lines of the vineyards and that adds so much interest yeah, invite, I guess and vitality. Place, Gorge is really unique. I think during the story, I only had, oh, maybe six hours in a week of good light. <laughs> then we had just um, rainfall that we really needed greatly and a lot of fog. So you've got to just work and move really quickly with the scenarios. So the, the next one is continuing on in Washington to a winery that Bob and I do a lot of work with. It's Cayuse. And this is their their vineyard up towards the Blue Mountains. It's very steep. The drone shot kind of flattens it out a bit. Those mm. angles are up to 60 degrees, which makes it really hard to be able to showcase the terroir and keep up with the, the pickers. Right. But, you know, another way to kind of showcase a group shot safely done is to get people to spread out and bring a drone in there. So... Just trying to add a little bit of playfulness to... Oh, I see. They're raising their hands, yeah. 
Yeah, and then another one of their vineyards is more flat, and it's like the opposite. So it's difficult to try to see what they're doing in there. So by bringing a drone straight over, and again, the diagonals, and just waiting for the right moment with the grapes to be handed over into the, the tractor, you get a sense of um, just how narrow those lines are, which is um, really unique. Yeah. When you're working really hot, steep, this crew is amazing, um, how they're able to pick in these conditions over and over as you're like a mountain goat it's all this fractured basalt and these really steep vines and this amazing um terroir that um, i wanted to be able to capture so i was on the top of the row shooting down and you can see a little cow in the background they have a pasture uh, it was midday light um which isn't as ideal again but um all the lines converging i think made it work and it's more the Definitely. series of photos that um, the next two, in conjunction with this, I think, give a sense of this place. Oh, yeah. So, and carrying that, I mean, those are, you know, actually the normal bucket's 25 pounds. I'm sure that's like 35 pounds or so, and, and they move fairly quick. So you've uh, got to anticipate where they're going to come into the frame. And, um, yeah, just keeping it vintage specific with the, the face masks and the safety being spaced apart, but not having it be like forbearing. So the same thing, there's the winemaker, Christoph, he's sampling some of the grapes um, as they're being sorted into the bins and yeah. just how steep it is kind of looking behind the scene. And then this is back in the Willamette Valley, and it was a magical foggy morning, but from the ground until you got to maybe 700 feet, there was a really dense layer of fog. So you can see all the white layers in the shot and kind of the remnants of the California fire. This oh, yeah. last fire actually started to creep back up into Oregon, so there weren't the typical crystal clear shot so I had to go pretty high as 400 feet above the vineyard and then I actually did an, a unique thing with the drone is I did five different photos and I stitched them in Photoshop after oh wow because cool. obviously you don't have the drone like most uh -huh. drones don't go you know on their side you're in trouble so I wanted to be able to capture that layering of the sky smoke yeah. and the flow and then this vineyard is almost at a thousand feet, so it popped up above. And um, you just got the tiny harvest crew and cars beneath. Um, and I had a whole series of these photos, but I just thought this was interesting how you can still take a drone and when you've got not as ideal skies, when you're down at a lower level, figure out different ways to, to be able to shoot it. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and then, I, I have a few photos from previous harvests in here. Bob and I, we both do a lot of work for Salute. And so much of the harvest energy is the concentration and the energy and the focus that these people are working and picking. It's incredibly hard work. Um, and so much of that often is in the faces. And so it was interesting this year to try to do a different dynamic with that when we had to shoot everything with masks on. So I guess it's just a little teaser to previous harvests, the, the next previous time. years. Um, this I love. If you look at the dogs, yeah, it's a, it's a is that a pug? Yeah, but you know how their mouth kind of goes down, and you look uh -huh. at her mouth, and I love the little. Oh, that's true. They're both doing the same just expression. Wine maker throughout the whole vineyard. Every time she picked, um, um, they often love to sample some of the grapes but i just i like that moment how the sun really brought the attention to what she was picking and their expressions um kind of the dog it. looking at yeah that's you know, great so, and then again usually we have beautiful light and weather so it really captures that feeling of, of harvest early in the morning as people are out on location so all these are not set up shots so I'm just following the crew and figuring out the right angle and perspective and composition to be at to give a feeling of what that vintage is. Right. And that's actually skipping back to a different day at Open Claim. Um, and it was super foggy that morning. And so I, I, for me, this kind of encapsulated a bit of the feel of this vintage, a little bit more mysterious. We've had great fall conditions waiting past all the fires and so the grapes look great 
people both had masks on, but they're kind of out of focus in the background because I wanted to be able to capture more of the mood of the scene instead of the actual pickers. And then this, yeah, just a spider had web. a bunch of different options that had a very mysterious type of feel. We actually did um, a bunch of videos with this as well, but I, the thick fog and how it just perfectly affixed to the spider web and the feeling of, of harvest. He had a mask on, but he's walking away from camera, so you can't tell, and it's not really the focus of it, but I thought it also captured the mood of the, the vintage. And then coming into the little details as well. So most of the vineyards we work with are organic or biodynamic or regenerative agriculture, just focusing on the health of all the microsystems and organisms that are there. So ladybugs are beautiful and they're a sign of good luck, but they're also a sign of a really healthy environment. So just kind of coming in on some of the details when maybe the larger landscapes aren't as easy. We hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like and leave a comment. We love to hear from you. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can know when all of our future videos come out. And finally, be sure to get out there and capture your own images of life.